All right, so today we're gonna talk about Cefit, aka Controlled Flight into Terrain, the fifth concept of human factors inside aviation. We'll see why controlled flight into terrain is one of the most dangerous situations we could ever get ourselves into, why airline pilots practice so much to avoid it at all costs, which factors are more likely to cause us to fall into this problem, and which are the simple and yet super ultra effective ways to fight it back. Hi, my name is Jorge Muñoz, I'm a senior instructor pilot working in El Salvador and as always you will find the timestamps linked in the description below this video and also in the pinned comment down below in case you want to check out something in particular. Now let's start with control flight into terrain. As one of the concepts inside single pilot resource management, controlled flight into terrain basically is what happens when we are very certain of what we're doing. We are sure that what we are doing is right. We are doing it good. Everything is going just as planned. Our altitude is constant. Also our heading. All the parameters seem to be good enough. The entire flight is in order. Or so we thought. Because even though all these things seem to be going just as planned, even though we have everything under our control, we still ended up heads first into an accident. So, no one ever noticed that we were going to have an accident. But you would think that when an accident is about to happen, everyone inside the airplane is to an extent ready for it. The passengers were given instructions by the flight crew, flight crew of what to do. There is this tense air inside everyone's mind, since, well, their life is on the line. But in this context of control flight into terrain, everyone was living their normal life, having a fun, chill time, without any concerns whatsoever, up until the very moment, the very second, the airplane crashed. In other words, we led the airplane and everyone inside, including us, to a crash either with terrain or water, i.e. mountains, trees, the ocean, whatever. We had a controlled flight up until the very end. But why was it controlled and yet we still ended up on a crash? Because we had no prior awareness of what was actually happening. We had no idea of the real situation of our flight. To put it in three words, we were wrong. We were wrong about what we were doing all along. Our 3D mental map of the situation was just mistaken. We got lost on our own mental scheme of the flight. That's what happened. Okay, it seems like I ran out of things to say to describe the same concept. By the way, if you want to dive deep into building this 3D mental scheme or mental map of your flight, then click the video right here on your screen right now or also the one linked in the description below this video. But I'm sure that by now you understand the concept of control flight into terrain. So, how do we solve it? Well, for airliners or big companies inside the aviation industry, it's fairly easy to reduce the controlled flight into terrain by doing intensive, well-structured, professional training programs for all their pilots and flight crews, like for pretty much everyone in general, as well as by implementing a lot of expensive equipment that will help the pilots throughout the whole flight. So they seem to be sorted out. Sadly, reality is not as nice for us inside the general aviation world, because we, for the most part, don't have access to the same professional training nor cutting edge equipment. We are just mere mortals. So we have to work with the cards we are dealt. And since I don't think that there is any pilot nor someone similar watching this video, that's assuming at all that someone is still watching my video. Let's talk a bit about which factors can cause us to have a control flight into terrain. First, we have weather. As you would assume, it is incredibly easier to crash an airplane against the terrain or water when we are flying under IMC or instrument meteorological conditions. 
i.e. poor weather conditions like clouds, storms and such than flying into BMC, that is visual meteorological conditions, i.e. a good weather, a sunny day, with unlimited or at least fairly okay visibility. Second, we have something like unfamiliar environment. Of course, it is easy to know where you are or at least to have an idea when you are somewhere you are used to fly. You know that there is a mountain over there and also some tall buildings near the airport. Your 3D mental map of that zone is pretty well designed. But what if you are going somewhere outside of your domains? You can't lose your positional awareness at any moment during the flight. Or at least you shouldn't. You can't get lost nor get confused about where are you coming from or where are you going to. Where are you at right now and where are you going next? So as you can see here, it also comes down to play the situational awareness factor. The last concept we talked about last time. Check that video out if for some reason you haven't already. And by the way, if you want to become an outstanding private pilot, if you are curious and you want to prepare yourself in the best possible way for all the tests to come, or even if you are an advanced private pilot that wants to remember and perfect the basis and the knowledge from the BFR world, or you want to start your private pilot training with a heads up over the others, then I highly recommend you, you should check out my book Essential Knowledge for Private Pilot. You will find the link of this book in the description below this video and also in a pinned comment down below. It is an Amazon Kindle exclusive. This book uses the two most effective study techniques in the whole world, which are active recall and space repetition and it applies them into aviation. So if that sounds good to you, then please go check out the book down below. It is available in English as well in Spanish. Remember, you shouldn't be studying hard, you should be studying effectively and with this book you can do just that. Knowing a little bit about aerodynamics can also help you to avoid the controlled flight into terrain. After all, every knowledge is good knowledge. Continuing with the video, another thing that can lead us to have a controlled flight into terrain is having to do non-standard procedures or the out of the normal situations. Look, it's fine if we get used to what we typically do during our flights. We can get used to practice certain maneuvers or to get used to do a certain amount of IFR procedures or emergency situations. But can you still stay comfortable and composed if you have to do something out of the normal for you? Something that you don't practice every day? Can you still maintain your 3D mental map of what you are doing or are you going to get completely lost? Now, something that also could affect us is the loss of communication. This one isn't even anybody's fault, but you have to know what to do if it happens. What's your plan? Which altitude are you going to go next? How are you going to let everyone else know that you have lost comms? If you were being guided by control tower and suddenly you lost all communications, how can you stay on a safe distance from other traffic or from terrain elevations that you cannot see either because you are flying during night or you are flying under instrumental meteorological conditions? Look, nobody can say that a controlled flight into terrain it's impossible to occur, not even airliners, not even with all their fancy training and equipment. But here are some things that we as pilots from the general aviation world can do. The first and most important thing that we can do to uh, try to avoid a controlled flight into terrain is to do a good flight plan. As I said before, it's good and it's easy to have a good 3D mental map of the training zones that you usually fly over. But if you are traveling places outside of your knowledge box, give yourself the necessary time to make a solid flight plan. To know the obstacles, the terrain that you are going to be flying over, the distances that you are going to cover. Really, I cannot overstate the importance of making a good flight plan, even if it is somewhere that you already Already know, let alone somewhere where you haven't been before. It's always easier to fly somewhere new if your mind has already been there five minutes ago. 
I can guarantee you that this simple advice will help you to avoid the vast majority of possible controlled flight into terrain situations we have talked about. Also, the other thing that you can do is to use the current charts and procedures. Remember, the obstacles are always changing. New buildings are being built, new antennas, new cables, not new mountains though. But that's one of the main reasons why charts are constantly being renewed because new things are always being built and if you don't expect them to be where they are then you can experience a not so happy ending the good news here is that if you use electronic charts and you have a subscription your charts will always be up to date but yeah keep this advice in the back of your mind of course just as with the rest of these human factors concepts you will need to constantly practice them in order to get better at them and if you do have terrain and navigation displays be sure to use them check them out constantly especially if you're having second thoughts about where you are so my last advice would be know how to use the equipment inside your airplane and how to use your airplane in general if you found this video interesting, then you should go check out this video over here. It has a lot of knowledge and advices on how to start your instrument rating. Or also you can check out this video over here. It has the knowledge and the advices to start your multi-engine rating. So, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like, comment, share and all that stuff. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye bye.